You're listening to Side by Side with Kathy Wilson. Episode 16, Hickory Takes Center Stage. Have you ever noticed that the phone always rings when you are in the bathroom? I wonder why this always happens to me. Perhaps my guardian angels only made the grade by the skin of her teeth. And when no one is looking, she just adores playing tricks on me. Well, if I am ever asked to write an evaluation report on the job she is doing, you can be certain that I will tell all. This story opens with a blasted phone ringing. Ralph is outside reading the paper on the patio, and I am occupied in the privy. Hickory doesn't answer phones, by the way. My moment of reflection is brought to an abrupt halt. I rush to make myself presentable and answer the infernal phone. Oh, drat, I complained to Hickory as I made a mad dash before it rang off a wall. Probably someone wants to sell me a vacuum cleaner. On picking up the phone, I heard a voice I didn't recognize and prepared myself to reject the opportunity of purchasing a filter queen. Brooms are cheaper. Hello, I'm calling on behalf of St. David's Lionesses. Is this Kathy? I replied that I was, all the time wondering what this was all about. I'm Connie, and I am calling to ask if you would be willing to come to our next meeting and talk to us about your guide dog. I listened carefully to what Connie was asking me and realized this was within my ability. In short, speaking before a group of lionesses was a small task considering what the Lions Foundation had done for me. I explained that as long as someone took me to the meeting, I would be glad to come. Connie informed me that it was a dinner meeting, and would I be bringing my dog as well? She hoped that I would. I replied that Hickory went everywhere with me, and I marked the date and thanked her for the opportunity to speak with her group. Ralph set his paper aside as I took a chair in the shade. This time of day, the patio was especially lovely. I just received a surprising invitation. Since he wasn't reading his newspaper, this seemed a perfect time to tell him about my latest communication. Will you do it? Ralph sounded somewhat interested, but cautious as well. I think we should. Speaking in public isn't difficult for me. It's a dinner meeting, so I will be fed. What are you going to talk about? Are they giving Hickory dinner too? I noted the anxiety in his voice and wondered what could be worrying him. St. David's Lion sponsored Hickory. They raised the money that paid for Hickory as well as her training. I think lionesses just want to see how things are progressing. I'll write a speech and consider how best to demonstrate the ways that Hickory helps me. Are you certain she will be okay doing things in front of an audience? Suppose she pees on the floor or vomits. That wouldn't get you a standing ovation. They'd probably want to get rid of us pretty quickly if that happened. As I imagined the entire scenario, I started to laugh. That would definitely be an encore performance. The days moved on as I considered how to integrate Hickory into the talk. The audience needed to see my girl in action. They needed to understand what a wonderful thing they were doing when they supported the Lions Foundation. I thought about demonstrating how great she was in the grocery store, finding all the things I needed. We could set up a small obstacle course and have Hickory take me through it. Of course, I wouldn't mention the time she snitched the loaf of bread or the day she took me to the bar instead of the milk store. Some secrets should not be shared. As Hickory often points out, there is no need for everyone to realize how dumb Crazy Cat can be sometimes. The day of the St. David's dinner meeting was here. 
and my shopping bag was full of the things that I intended to use for our demonstration. There was a bottle of Pepsi, Cheerios, bananas, bread, and cat food. Besides these grocery items, I included my white cane to show the difference between a dog guide and using a cane. I slipped in a few of Hick's favorite goodies and we were ready to go. Connie was a very friendly woman and Hickory was quick to make her acquaintance. We got into her car and I explained that what I wanted to do this evening was a first for the Niagara Cat and Dog Team. I enlisted her help in setting up the obstacle course and then displaying the food in different places for Hickory to find. She thought this would be a lot of fun, and I certainly prayed she was right. The tables were set up and Connie seated us at the head table. Wow, we get to sit right at the head of things, and I'm not even getting married. How cool is that? Ladies were quick to introduce themselves and explain the position they served in their lioness group. One job I had never heard of before was the title of tail twister. I don't know about you, but the idea of twisting a lioness's tail sounds like a risky business. I prefer to live a bit longer. The woman who was charged with this task assured me that it was not dangerous. Everyone took their seats and waiters brought out the plates with roast chicken, mashed potatoes, carrots, and peas. With coffee to wash it all down. Of course, Hickory inspected my meal and realized that this was another occasion where Doggy gets nothing. She gave a loud sigh and dropped down next to my chair. Her big hope was that being a sloppy eater, I might drop a piece of chicken. I did very well in the poultry department and didn't lose a morsel. But the carrots were another matter. Even though I tried very hard, the carrots jumped off of my fork and fell conveniently in my girl's vicinity. No sense trying to retrieve them, as they were already down the dog. Connie thought that I might have better luck if the carrots were mixed with the mashed potatoes. Oh, I never mix my veggies, came my instant response. It's a good thing Hickory likes carrots, Connie observed. That's for sure, I thought, because I absolutely do not. Dinner was eaten and the dishes cleared away. I listened to their meeting and understood that this group of ladies was an active group who knew how to get things done. Then it was our turn, and introductions were made. Hickory and I took our place at the front of the room and Connie set up an obstacle course. Hickory remained in her sit-and-stay position while I got around all these barriers set up using my white cane. I managed this solo performance without crashing into anything while I explained the technique I was employing. Then it was Hickory's turn, and she walked straight into her harness and remained still while I buckled her in. On my first forward command, my super dog did exactly that, zigzagging around the chairs to reach the garbage can at the end of the track. She zipped around the bin and redid the obstacles to bring us back to the front of the room. Our audience was clapping hard. Hickory was overjoyed. I went on to tell about her ability to take me safely across streets, find curbs and bus stops, and locate doors and elevators. Connie distributed the food items at different locations in the room. Now Hickory had the job of showing what a great shopper she was. Hickory find the bananas. She sallied forth and took me across the room where the bananas were waiting for us. I explained that this was the first thing Hickory shopped for, because she really likes bananas. Hickory, let's get the Pepsi. Much to my relief, she walked a bit further and stopped right in front of the Pepsi. 
She never takes me to the Coke. She knows I'm a member of the Pepsi generation. I received some laughter and no one appeared to be bored yet. The team certainly had the audience's attention. Hickory and I had practiced this little talent show and I was relieved that things were moving along smoothly. Hickory, we need a loaf of bread. Once more, she located our shopping item at the end of the room. That swinging tail was working overtime, and the audience was still with us. Can you fault me with feeling confident? We were on a roll for sure. Only two more items to go. I gave Hick a hug and a treat. She certainly deserved it. Okay, Hickory, find the cat food. I was expecting to feel the pull of the harness in the direction I needed to go to find the cat food, but nothing happened. No pressure from the harness because Hickory was just sitting there. She was looking so sweet and cooperative while she ignored my last command completely. It was plain to see that I passed out the treat prematurely. Hickory, cat food. There she still sat, regarding her audience and then looking at me. There I stood, harness in hand, wondering what I should do now. I decided to explain my girl's delinquency. Well, as you can see, there is a problem. Our cat panda does not care much for Hickory. There are times when Panda can be pretty rude. Of course, Hick gets mad too and refuses to get the cat food for me. Hickory says that Panda can starve for all she cares. Panda has obviously trespassed on Hickory's better nature yet again. If I were in the store, I would have to get help or try for something else. Hickory, where are the Cheerios? What a relief! I felt that wonderful pull on the harness, and we were off to find the cereal. When she located the familiar yellow box, the lionesses erupted into laughter. Connie gave me the tin of Fancy Feast. She said that Hickory shouldn't have to cater to a cat. I asked if there were questions, and a woman wanted to know if they could pet Hickory. I replied that they sure could, but I needed to remove her harness first. Hick, would you like to say hello to these ladies? I took off her harness, and my girl went from one woman to the next, getting pets and praise. She worked the entire room until she had met everyone. She must be a politician, observed one lady. She does everything but kiss babies. Hickory does that too, if she has the chance. She loves kids. This was the beginning of a worthwhile occupation. Hickory and I, over the years, talked at schools, lions groups, churches, and choirs. It was all fun as far as the cat and dog team was concerned, and Hickory adored center stage. That night, my awesome Hickory settled into her bed as I fondled her soft velvet ears. She rested her nose on my knee, and I felt her warm breath. Sleep well, dear girl. You are so much loved.